peace and love in my life. I, I suffer too many things during the week to come to church and hear some preacher telling me I'm going to hell. That is not biblical. So, how is your love life this morning? Glory, yes. Glory. Glory to God. How is your love life? And one of the things you need to understand is that you've been chosen. Give me a candle because I'll be done. You and I have been chosen <laughs> to live before God. Remember the book said he chose you before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame before him in love. And I keep preaching this to y'all that want you to get it. The problem is you think you've been chosen to live before me or before the people in church. So you are designing your life to keep church folk happy. And you are not doing what God, I'm preaching good here. Y'all ain't gonna get it, but I'm preaching good. You are not doing what God called you to do because of what the church folks say. Some of y'all ain't been in church for a long time because of what church folk did. God did not call you to live before church people. They have more problems than you. And what they can do is I'm trying to, to glorify your problems so they can sin small. Y'all better than bother me in him. But God chose you to live before him. He made you holy and unblameless. What do you care if they blame you for what you're doing? On, you only in it for a season. You're not going to die. They're in that process. I'm preaching good here. Glory to God. I'm preaching good here for that. I don't know if anybody gets it, but I'm preaching good. So we have been chosen to live before him. And the blessing in our lives is being lived before the eyes of God. See, we've already been presented to God as already perfected. Watch this. But we have been chosen and perfected to live before him in love. Yeah. We have been chosen to live the love life and also to live to love people in life. Let me say it again. Wow, wow, wow. Come on, wow. Come on. When you was, was, was placed in Christ, God made you holy and without blame, and now you're walking in His love. Yes. Somebody's having the love of God. Love Open your mouth and have some faith that's having the love of God. I might be in the valley right now, but I'm in the love of God. Hell may be breaking loose right now, but I'm in the love of God. It's all by design. This is because he loved me. I'm living in the love of God. So I've been chosen to live in, in before him in love, which means I've been chosen to receive love, yes, yes. but also chosen yes. to love. Yes, yes. Are you with me now? Yes, now that you're in church, you've been chosen to live before God. But when God sees you, he wants to see love. Either you walk in love or give in love. All God wants to see from us is love. Right. He wants to see receiving his love or giving it up to somebody else. Right. Are you walking with me here? He don't care about your dance. He don't care how much you speak in tongues. All that's a part of your journey and a part of being in the church. But what God wants to see, that's why I'm asking this morning, how is your love life? Are you walking in love or condemnation? Because if you're in the love of God, you'll never be condemned about anything. If you're in the love of God, you'll never be guilty about anything. If you walk in the love of God, which is the gift of salvation, you will already know that God's already, Jesus already paid for everything you could ever do. So you and I have to choose to walk in the manifested love of God. One of the scriptures I read you tells you that Jesus has secured you. This is so wonderful. Somebody say amen. amen. When I read you chapter Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, not the Pope 39 said that Jesus has secured you in the love of God. You need to know this. This is good to know. Yes. Listen to what I'm saying. Nothing can separate you from being in God's love. Which means that you are secured. But it does not mean you're not going to suffer these things. Amen. It does not mean you're not going to see tribulation and persecutions and distresses and perils and nakedness and famine and sword. You will see these things, but it will not separate you from God's love. It does not mean you're not going to have weak times. It does not mean you're not going to understand most of the time what you're going through. But by in the midst of it, somebody say amen, who hear me? In the midst of it, you have to understand that I am still walking in the love of God. Amen. I think I'm losing my showers here. Because it's time to really have some faith right now. This way you go from the jo that joy part of church to the meat of church. You have to make a decision that I'm living in the love of God. Nobody's going to give that to you. The devil's not going to let you accept it easily. You have to make a decision that no matter what I go through, I know because I'm in Christ, I'm in the love of God. What's your step from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Nothing. So I have security in this love. When I have my best moments, 
I'm in the love of God. When I have my worst moments, I'm in the love of God. When you do the best thing to me, I'm in the love of God. When you do the worst thing to me, I'm in the love of God. When I have my best successes, I'm in the love of God. When I exercise the greatest failure, I'm the only ready for it. I'm still in the love of God. Nothing separates me from being a slave. That's why I know that he's always going to be with me. Stop what he's saying. 